A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and makes cloth with, skin, with skillful hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward of her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. Today we celebrate the feast of yet another Trinitarian saint, Blessed Anna Maria Taichi. Today's first reading for her feast day, taken from the book of Proverbs, beautifully and completely describes the domestic virtues of Blessed Anna Maria Taichi, Trinitarian, third order member, wife, mystic, and mother. She was born in the year 1769 in Siena. Her family, she, her father and mother, moved when she was a young girl to Rome and it was there that she met and eventually uh, married Domenico Taichi on January 7th, 1790. They were married for 47 years and she gave birth to seven children, three of whom died in infancy. Now, Domenico was not a sheepish man. In fact, some described him as a wolf. He was ill-tempered and given to angry outbursts. While Anna Maria was occupied in their simple and modest home with her tasks as a seamstress, trying to bring extra income into her house to support her family and her constant ministry to the poor on the streets of Rome. Domenico worked as a porter and a servant in the, the Kichi Palace for the royal Kichi family there. And there he was submissive to his employees. He was a servant, as I said, and a porter in that royal household, but submissive as he may have been to his employees, as soon as he came home from work, things seemed to change. He would easily fall into outrage and angry outbursts as soon as he came home from work, whether in the evening or sometimes in the early morning hours after he was forced to work late because the Kijis had lavish receptions and he had to clean and wash up and do all of the dishes and silverware as a servant in that household. In his own household, when he came home, he expected to be served by his wife and children. Now, he never hit Anna Maria, but he was very strict with the children and expected that they attend to his every want running to meet him at the door and 
they did so. But I think they did so perhaps more out of fear than out of devotion. Their sister Sophie, I'm sorry, Anna Maria and Domenico's daughter Sophie once said this of her father, my father was as pious and earnest a man as one could want, but of such fiery, exacting, and haughty traits, a wild temperament enough to amaze one. On coming home, he would whistle or knock, and we had to dash immediately to open the door at the risk of breaking our bones. In fact, twice, my sister Mariucha fell down through rushing too quickly to meet him, and on one of those occasions, Sophia writes, she had one of my own infant children of nine, of five months in her arms. If everything was not just as he wanted when he came in, furious would he be, and he would go so far as to snatch hold of the tablecloth where the dinner was served and throw everything to the four winds. With that kind of environment in the house, one would not think that either spouse might be given to sainthood, yet it may well have been precisely because of Domenico's harsh and severe personality that Anna Maria, in fact, became a saint. Domenico would testify later in his life that throughout all their years of marriage, he never saw Anna Maria utter one harsh word or criticize him or fail to serve his needs in the home, apart from taking care of their children and homeschooling them, if you will, and carrying out a constant ministry to the poor on the streets of Rome and the sick in the hospital for the incurable ill in the St. James section of Rome. Anna Maria was a mystic and she is perhaps most remembered for a vision which she had and which continued throughout all of her life from the early 20s that from her when she was a young girl in her 20s to the day of her death. She was constantly aware of a kind of brilliant and luminous globe that was supported by two thorn twigs. And in that globe, whenever Anna Maria was in prayer and especially lost in ecstasy, she would see events, present and future, accurately predicting what would happen in individuals' lives and also on a worldwide level. In that globe, she would sometimes come to know the details of the lives of strangers whom the Holy Spirit had in encouraged her to pray for, and all of her predictions were accurate. She had the ability to read the disposition of others' soul. One glance was enough for her to know the state of the soul of anyone whom she met. With those kinds of gifts and abilities, she was sought out by the cardinals of the day, members of the Roman Curia, who would in turn refer her insights to the Pope. And she was sought also 
by royalty, even Napoleon's mother, and by beggars. They all constantly came to her to learn from her insight and spiritual wisdom. Now, no matter who was present in her kitchen or sitting room, when Domenico came home, she would quickly dismiss them, including the cardinals, the princes of the church, because she saw that her first obligation was to serve her husband, Domenico. There are many, many cures that are associated with her during her lifetime. Persons cured of cancerous growths, more than one woman cured of tumors that were in the uterus. Others who had skin disease, Anna Maria would immediately go to those whom she knew who were sick and simply pray for them or offer them, call down God's blessing upon them, maybe use some blessed oil. And in case after case, they were restored to health. Something that particularly struck me uh, in her life as I was reviewing her life yesterday was how her father, Luigi, after he had squandered what pension he had after the death of his wife, wound up just kind of living on the streets, if you will, though he did have initially work in Rome as a porter at an orphanage, but he lived off of Anna Maria's generosity. And towards the end of his life, Luigi's life, her father, he was sent to live in a kind of hospice at St. John Lateran for the elderly and the sick and the dying. And Anna Maria every day would visit her father, bring him the best of food that she could find, often leftovers from the Kiji family's banquets, and she attended to his every need. Before he died, he developed a skin disease which caused scabs and pussy wounds to cover his body, and Anna, day after day, washed her father's wounds and cleaned the scabs. Her father, while there at that hospice, did nothing but complain about the food and the conditions there. And Domenico, Anna Maria Taigi's husband himself, noted that never once did my father-in-law ever thank his daughter for her extreme kindness to him? Don't we all want to be thanked now and again for the good that we do? Anna Maria Taichi never wavered in doing that good, never seeking any word of thanks from her father or the hundreds and hundreds of other people to whom she ministered. I think she stands as a huge model of charity for all of us, especially we Trinitarians, and a model of absolute devotion to prayer. While her home would seem to be anything but a peaceful environment, our own husband attested toward the end of his life and after Anna had died, that Anna's constant attention and care created for him what he called a paradise of peace on earth. 
In fact, his character was little by little um, improved and was less volatile as they moved further and further into their 47 years of marriage. So we look to Blessed Anna Maria Taichi as an inspiration in prayer and patience in living our lives, each of us in our respective states, but especially inspiration to our third order members, laity dedicated to serving the poor and living virtue in their homes, just as Anna Maria Taiji did so perfectly well. The 30th of May would be a hundred years since her beatification, the 30th of May a few days ago. Blessed Anna Maria Taiji, pray for us that we might serve others in humility and be constant in our patience and service to those who are closest to us and to all in need and untiring in our attention to God in prayer. God bless you and have a wonderful day.